Hello everyone, my name is Nicole. I'm an aquarist here at the Aquarium of Alabama. And we are doing our Ask the Aquarist uh, segment on seahorses and pipefish today. So these guys, even though um, they may not look very much like other fish, they are fish. And I'll give you, um, kind of tell you the differences between them and other fish. So these guys, they have a prehensile tail, just like a monkey does. And they'll use that tail to grab onto the grasses and hold tight so they don't get blown away in the current because they're not very good swimmers. And you can see they're not good swimmers because they have just a small little dorsal fin on their back and then two tiny pectoral fins right behind their head. And that's really all they have to maneuver around. So it's hard for them to swim and swim against the current. So that's why they, they have the grass and like to hang out in the grass beds. Another difference from other fish species is going to be their heads. This is how they kind of got the name for seahorse. It does look a little bit like a seahorse's, or sorry, a horse's head. Um, and that's a, a very unique snout that they have. It's kind of tube shapes. Um, they use it kind of like a straw. And what they do is they snick up their food. So they approach the food and they'll just suck in really sharply. Um, and they'll kind of eat the, they'll eat the food whole and they'll go straight into their stomachs. Another thing that makes them a little bit different from other fish is going to be their lack of scales. So instead of scales, they kind of have a bony plating um, over their body with a little bit of skin over that. And that provides them protection from kind of getting open wounds and sores, whether that's from just the environment or maybe a bite from a predator. So that kind of makes them a little bit different from the other fish that you might see or catch while you're out fishing or swimming. We've also got pipefish in here. These guys are related to seahorses. They're both in the Cygnathid family, but pipefishes are basically the straight, uh, skinny version of a seahorse. So they've got the same head. It's a, a tubular snout, um, and then the same fins, but they've got the long straight body, and actually on their tails, they do have a tiny, tiny tail fin, which the seahorses don't have because they use their tails to grab onto the grass. So for pipefish, they can't swim too well either, but they'll kind of just slide in between the blades of the grass and that's how they'll keep themselves from kind of blowing away in the current. When you say blowing away in the current, that's because these guys live in shallow grassy areas, correct? Yep, um, so you can get a, quite a bit of wave action in that shallow area. Um, and we also, you'll find the grass is kind of in estuaries, which is what we are, the Mobile Bay is an estuary where uh, lots of different grasses grow and provide protection for uh, small or baby animal or baby fish. Um, but yeah, a lot of there can be a lot of wave action and currents in, in those areas where they're found. So they like to hold onto the grass for protection. They'll actually grab onto anything with their tail. So sometimes you'll see the seahorses grab onto the pipefish or the other seahorses. Uh, they don't pay much mind what they're grabbing onto. They just think it's safe. Is there a way to tell a male from a female seahorse? Absolutely. So you're looking at a male right now, and you can tell he's got, he's actually got a pouch because the males give birth in this species. So if you look at his body, it looks kind of like a D. So you've got their straight back and then their stomach and then into the pouch. So it's kind of a slow curve. And then over here on the other side of the tank is our female. She has more of a P-shaped body. So it's gonna be a much sharper curve of her stomach. And then it's gonna go straight into her tail. But like I said, this species is unique. They, the males do give birth to the babies. So once they're about four to six months of age, they'll develop the pouches. And then the female will transfer her eggs to the male's pouch where he will fertilize them. And for this species, the line seahorse, after about three weeks, um, they'll give birth. And it's basically just a miniature seahorse, very small. And we've had several seahorse birds here, haven't we? We have. So last time we talked, um, we had we saw some mating and some courtship between the female and some of the males. Um, that was successful. And now we have a number of babies. Uh, they have had four batches of babies. Pretty much, um, they'll transfer the eggs. After three weeks, they'll give birth, and then they'll transfer eggs right again. So basically, every three weeks, we're seeing more babies. Now these guys are about two to three months old now. So they're, they're a couple inches long now, but when they're first born, they're less than an inch long. They're very small, but they do look just like a mini seahorse. And they require a lot of work to take care of. So, 
So there's a reason though that they are in a separate container within the same tank. Absolutely. So this is uh, for their protection. So we've got pretty big filtration on this tank. Um, we don't want the babies to be kind of sucked up in, into that. Um, that would obviously not be very good for them. And then we've got a couple animals in here that might take advantage of a very small baby. So we do have a tiger shrimp. And I haven't seen the seahorses uh, preying on their own babies, but the pipefish will absolutely take advantage of seeing some live food in the tank. So we put them in here. Um, that provides protection from the other animals, protection from the filtration, and it actually really helps us be able to feed them. They have to be fed four times a day, and it's got to be pretty concentrated. So when they're first born, we feed them brine shrimp that we hatch here, so it's live food. Um, and they have to eat thousands of these brine shrimp in order to keep growing and stay healthy. So um, we're able to concentrate the food in here and get them access to the food that they need. So how old are they when they start doing, with, this is actually called hitching, where they're holding on to food. Yes, um, so it depends on the species. Some species will hitch to the grass immediately, like right at birth. And some will stay what's called pelagic, where they're kind of like a plankton and they just float around in the water for a few weeks. Um, with these guys, I've seen actually some combination. It's interesting. Um, these guys are from a breeder. Um, these, these seahorses are, they're not wild caught. So I'm not really sure um, where they come from, but for line seahorses, we have the southern species and the northern species. And they have different kind of life histories. So the, the northern species will stay more pelagic and swim longer, and the southern will actually hitch right away, and I've seen a combination with these guys. Um, but it's, other than where they're found, it's very hard to tell the difference between northern and southern lion seahorse. Um, so I'm not really sure where these guys came from, but it's interesting to see that difference in the babies. Um, and then speaking about similarities and differences, going back to our pipefish, we have some in here, and you pointed out that have pointed out before that pipefish give birth the same way? Yes. So they are the same family. They have the same um, method as the seahorses. The males have a pouch um, or some species of pipefish kind of don't, it's not an enclosed pouch but more like a V um, where there's like kind of more like a pouch flaps where they'll have the eggs. Um, but yeah, our, one of our gulf pipefish in this box is pregnant. So you can kind of see the little orange eggs about halfway down his body. Now these gulf pipefish, this is about as big as they'll get. They won't get much longer. They can get a little bit rounder as they grow older. Um, but they were born here in September. So once they hit about six months, they started. Um, we started seeing the behavior of mating and, and having babies with these guys. So it's, it's a pretty quick life um, lifespan and lifestyle where it doesn't take long for them to mature. So how long do pipefish live? Um, it really depends on the species. And for pipefish, there's not much as known as there is about seahorses. A lot of people have studied seahorse at length, but not really pipefish. Because there's a lot more, there's probably about 200 species of pipefish, whereas there's, there's only like 30 species of seahorses. So not too much is known. I do know for the gulf pipefish, they can reach about one to three years of age. Um, so hopefully these guys live, make it longer than the one year. We'll, we will see as they grow, we'll kind of be able to determine more exactly how old they'll live, long, how, old, how long they'll live for. Um, for the lion seahorses, uh, they live about three to five years. And the age, the age like, actually kind of depends on the size of the species. So there's a species called the pygmy seahorse or the dwarf seahorse, they only live maybe for one to two years, and they're much smaller than this species, the lion seahorse. And then your bigger species, like the big belly seahorse, they're going to live longer, maybe seven to ten years. So in taking care of these seahorses for the number of years that you've been here, what are some interesting things that you've learned about taking care of them? Absolutely. So. It's been very interesting because they take so much work and I have to feed them so often. I'm actually spending a lot of time with them. So I'm able to kind of observe their behaviors. And it's almost kind of like a little family drama in here. We'll have different males chasing the female around. And she'll, you'll see that Leslie's up here on the pipe. She likes to come up here and get away from the boys sometimes. Um, 
So that's kind of interesting, just seeing their behavior and their interaction with one another. Um, but also I've learned that they can be super finicky, uh, especially when it comes to food. So they can be really picky about what they'll eat, and if they stop eating, um, that could be a sign that they're not doing well. So I have to really pay attention and make sure everyone gets their food. And if you look closely at the chain pipe fish, you can see that this one is quite skinny. And then the one further in the back is quite a bit thicker. Now we got these guys at the same time, um, wild caught off the beach, but that one's grown twice as big. And you wonder why? Well, he is eating the mycid shrimp that we feed and it's a lot healthier. It's got uh, quite a bit more nutrients and fatty acids um, than some of the other food. Whereas the skinny guy only eats um, things like amphipods, which are a small crustacean we collect from our tanks, or even killifish fry. So he's, he's quite a bit smaller, but he's still healthy, just not growing as fast as the other one. And then what about taking care of the babies? I think this has been interesting for you, hasn't it? It has. It's been, definitely been a learning experience. Um, they require a lot of work. They have to be fed about four times a day. Um, when they're first born, like I said, we feed them live brine shrimp, so we have to hash out the brine shrimp, enrich it, make sure that they ha the brine shrimp has things like algae and stuff in them that makes them a little bit more healthy than just like a french fry. Um, and then as they start growing older, we introduce other foods. Um, we have cyclops, which are a very small crustacean, um, and the mycid shrimp. So it's a lot of work to get them eating well, eating consistently, and then transition them to the different foods as they grow up. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with our Facebook fan friends. And we're going to have our Ask the Aquarist on the fourth Tuesday of June, chatting about the Octopus Maze project, I think is what we have on the schedule. And uh, we'll chat then.